Okay, let's dive right in. If you're a developer, you know this feeling. It's kind of like magic. You open up a modern code editor, think VS Code, and you start working on a Python file. And boom, you get perfect, intelligent auto-completion. Then, a second later, you switch over to a completely different project, something in Rust. And suddenly, your editor is an absolute expert in Rust's super complex syntax. It feels like the editor just knows everything. But how? I mean, really, how is that possible? How can one single tool become a fluent, instant expert in dozens, even hundreds of different programming languages? It's a question we don't really stop to think about, mostly because it just works so darn well. You know, the logical assumption, what I think we all probably thought at first, is that the brilliant folks behind VS Code just painstakingly coded support for every single language right into the editor itself, that they built this massive, monolithic library of all the world's programming knowledge. But here's the twist. That assumption is totally wrong. And the reality is so much more elegant, so much smarter. Your editor isn't a genius because it knows every language. It's a genius because it was designed not to have to. The secret isn't some huge built-in brain. The secret is a protocol. And once you understand it, you see this profound shift that completely rewired the entire world of software development. To really get why this protocol was such a game changer, we have to go back in time a little bit. We have to understand the crisis it solved. Because before this existed, the world of developer tools was trapped in this this total nightmare of complexity that was actively slamming the brakes on innovation. People called it the M by N problem. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Imagine a giant grid, right? On one axis, you've got all your editors, your M editors. So VS Code, Vim, Sublime Text, you name it. On the other axis, you've got all your languages, your N languages, like Python, JavaScript, Go, Rust. To get those smart features we love, you needed a unique custom-built plugin for every single box in that grid. A Python plugin for VS Code had absolutely nothing in common with a Python plugin for Sublime. It was an exponential mess. And this wasn't just messy. It was painful. It created massive, mind-numbing duplication of work. If you invented a new programming language, you couldn't just focus on your awesome compiler. No, you had to go build a dozen different finicky editor plugins. The quality was all over the place. Tooling in one editor would be great and in another would be terrible. And for new languages, it was a huge barrier. You can't get people to use your language without good tools, but nobody wants to build the tools until you have users. It was a classic catch-22. So, and this is the really crucial point. This wasn't just some technical inconvenience. It was like a hidden tax on the entire industry. Languages backed by huge companies like Google or Microsoft, well, they could afford to pay this tooling tax. But smaller, community-driven languages, no matter how brilliant their design was, they were at a huge disadvantage. This bottleneck was literally stifling innovation. So how do you break a cycle like that? Well, the solution that came along was brilliantly simple in its concept, but absolutely profound in its impact. It's called the Language Server Protocol, or LSP for short, and it just completely flipped the problem on its head. This slide says it all. We went from an exponential m times n problem to a simple linear m plus n problem. Think about that. Instead of every editor needing a special plugin for every language, now each editor just needs to know how to speak one common language, the protocol. And each programming language just needs one single language server that also speaks that protocol. That's it. The problem collapses. So at its heart, the LSP is just a standard. It's a rule book that says, hey, let's take all the language smarts, the parsing, the type checking, all the heavy lifting, and pull it out of the editor. We'll put it in its own separate process, the language server, and have them talk to each other. I love this analogy because it makes it so clear. The old way was like having a different remote for your TV, another for your sound system, another for your Blu-ray player, just a cluttered mess on your coffee table. The LSP way is like getting one of those awesome universal remotes. The remote is your editor, and it speaks one standard language to control all your different devices, which are the language servers. Okay, so that's the big idea. But how does this conversation between the editor and the language server actually happen? Well, let's walk through it. It's actually just a series of simple, structured JSON messages flying back and forth under the hood. The moment you open a code file, this little four-step dance begins. First, the handshake. The editor and the server basically say hello and figure out what features they both support. Second, the editor sends the whole file over to the server, which then keeps the copy in its memory. Third, 
as you type, the editor doesn't send the whole file again, that'd be crazy inefficient. It just sends these tiny little updates, like user inserted a C at line 5, column 10. The server processes that and immediately sends back any diagnostics. Yep, those are your red squiggly lines. And finally, when you do something like hover over a function, the editor sends a request and the server sends back the info. It's this constant, lightweight chatter. And this table here gives you a little peek into the language they're speaking. You can see these plain text messages like initialize for that handshake, text document slash did change for when you're typing, and that really important publish diagnostics message that the server sends back to power all that real-time feedback we rely on. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's incredibly efficient. All right, the tech details are super cool for sure, but the real story here, the reason we're even talking about this, is the real-world impact. What this protocol did for the entire developer ecosystem was nothing short of transformative. By finally solving that M by N problem, LSP unleashed what can only be described as a Cambrian explosion of developer tools. It was this incredible burst of life and diversity. Suddenly, language creators could pour all their energy into building one amazing language server, and they could do it with confidence, knowing it would just work everywhere. So what does this actually mean for you day to day? Well, first off, democratization. Niche up and coming languages like Rust or Zig can have tooling that's just as good as the giants. It gives you freedom of choice. You can use whatever editor you love, the S code, NeoVim, anything that speaks LSP and get a great consistent experience. The quality of the tools is just higher, period. Language experts are focusing on one great server instead of 10 mediocre plugins. And your editor stays snappy and fast because all that heavy duty code analysis is happening in a totally separate process, not bogging down your UI. But the story doesn't even end there. LSP's legacy is even bigger. It didn't just solve one problem. It gave us a powerful architectural blueprint for building the entire next generation of developer tools. This timeline here shows how that blueprint got used again and again. First, we got LSP for language features. Its wild success directly inspired the debug adapter protocol, or DAP, which did the exact same thing for debugging, decoupling the debugger from the editor UI. And now, we're seeing the same pattern influence how AI tools are built, with new protocols popping up that want to standardize how AI agents talk to our editors. When you step back and look at the whole thing, the language server protocol is so much more than a clever bit of tech. It's a testament to the incredible power of open standards and just plain good architecture. By taking things apart, by decoupling them, it quietly rewired the very foundation of our most essential tools, and in doing so, created a much more innovative and fair ecosystem for all of us. So LSP solved this massive complexity crisis for writing and understanding code. The same idea then solved it for debugging. Now it's being applied to AI. It really makes you wonder, doesn't it? What's the next huge M by N problem that's lurking in our workflows, just waiting for its own elegant protocol to come along and change everything all over again? <laughs>